Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we are going to discuss several packaging formats that are very widespread in the Android ecosystem. Now, namely, I'm speaking about JARs, APKs, AARs and AB formats. So let's understand what's the difference between all of these, why do we use them and also let's take a quick look into these packages, uh, into these files to understand what kind of contents can we expect to find there. So the first one will be Java Archive, just JAR. So JAR is a package file format. It's a file format that is used to aggregate many Java class files, the files that constitute the Java application, the compiled basically uh, Java files, and the associated metadata and resources like text, images, etc., into one file to distribute application software or libraries on the Java platform. So JAR is something that Android inherited from the Java world, and that's just basically a file format that is used to distribute Java applications or Java libraries. And of course, Android can reuse existing Java libraries. You probably know that. Now let's take a look under the hood and understand what can we expect to find inside JAR archives. If you try to find some JAR files inside a typical Android project, like this one, you won't find that many results and most of them will be kind of intermediates that Gradle uses in order to build your application. And of course, we have this Gradle wrapper jar as well. That's just the Gradle wrapper executable that is used when you build your application. Now, let's actually, you know, look into this Gradle wrapper jar. Turns out that jars are just zip files and therefore I can use unzip command to unzip this Gradle wrapper jar right here, dash D, and then right here into jar folder. So now let's go into jar folder and just see what's going on here. So we have this meta inf directory and org directory and some other properties file. And for example, we can open, let's say, let's just see what's going on inside this uh, properties file. These are just some parameters of the Gradle configuration that we use. Now, if I go and open, let's say meta inf, and here we have this manifest file. This manifest file also contains various parameters related to Gradle. And the most interesting part is of course this org directory. So let's just see what's going on inside org. Let's list all the files there. And as you can see, this directory just contains class files. Class files are the compiled Java classes. And so you can see, for example, that we have this org Gradle CLI package and it contains this project properties command line converter class. So that's the contents of a typical jar file. Of course, jar files can be much bigger, much more complex than this one. But generally speaking, you will have this meta inf uh, directory and you'll have several directories that contain just class files and maybe also some resources, images, text files, everything that is bundled with the specific application or a library that this jar file corresponds to. The next type that we're going to discuss are APK files. So APK is a package file format. Again, this is a package that is used to distribute and install Android applications. So APK is something special to Android ecosystem. And as a result of APKs containing basically an Android application, uh, APK contains all the elements that an app needs to install correctly on users' devices. So whatever your application needs, again, including manifests and images and uh, compiled classes, which inside APKs, as we will see shortly, uh, are called DEX files and not just class files, everything goes inside the APK because APK should be standalone self-sufficient artifact containing your Android application that users can install on their devices. So let's take a look inside APK files. Just like before, I will just search for APK files inside my project and we see several intermediates, but what I actually want to use is this one. And just like with jars, APKs are also just zip files and therefore I can unzip this file into, let's say, APK folder. And then we have some conflicts and I want to replace all of them. I would probably just investigate why this happens if that will be important, but I don't think it's important at this point. I just want you to see what's going on inside this APK file. I'm not going to kind of reverse engineer it and recompile it later. So as you can see, the contents of APK file are much more involved than, you know, the simple jar file that we saw before. So what do we have here? First of all, we have this Android manifest XML file and you might try to open it and expect to see some Android manifest XML code in it, but that's actually not the case because Android manifest and actually 
other XML files inside your APK distributable are compiled into so-called, let me show you, file Android Manifest XML into so-called Android binary XML. So this is a binary file, even though it has this XML extension, which is a little bit misleading, but that's what we do. And just like with jar files, we have this meta inf. And if we go and just, you know, let's see what we have inside meta inf, we have lots of different files right here. And these files just contain versions of different libraries that I use inside my application. Let's take Dagger, for example. So let's say I want to understand which version of Dagger I'm using inside my app. And you can see that by using 2.45. Okay, again, what else do we have here? We have classes.dex. And this file actually contains your entire application, all the executables inside your application. So just to remind you that inside our jar file, we had org, gradle, and then let's say CLI, right? So we have many class files, and these are the compiled files from Java. But in Android, the situation is a little bit different and the class files are further converted into DEX files in order to be uh, more easily installable on Android devices. And this classes.dex actually contains all the class files of your application. And we also have Kotlin directory. And this directory is here just because I'm using Kotlin inside this project. And it contains all kinds of stuff related to Kotlin. We have lib, very interesting directory here. Find inside lib and type files. So you can see that this lib directory contains just one single native library, lib my native code. So this is a very simple native library that I created inside my application. It contains just several lines of code, but please notice that um, this lib uh, folder contains multiple variants of this one single native library, because if we are discussing native code and native code is of course C++ or C code that you write inside your Android project. So this code should be compiled specifically for each individual architecture, CPU architecture. And therefore inside a lib folder, we will have a different subfolders for individual CPU arcs. All right, what else do we have here? And for example, I can uh, go and look what I have inside rest folders. And of course I have lots and lots of different resources. I have PNGs and XMLs. And just like before, if I do file and one specific XML, that will be Android binary XML. So inside APK files, all the XMLs are compiled into this binary XML format. So these are the contents of a typical APK file that your users can install on their devices. Android archive, AAR. So AR is a package file format, just like jar or APK that is used to distribute Android libraries. So this format is specifically designed for Android libraries. These files are consumed by other Android projects at build time. As we said, jar files in Java ecosystem can contain either full-blown Java applications or Java libraries. In Android, AR files cannot contain applications. They're there just for distribution of Android libraries. And these files should be plugged into your Android project when you want to use some kind of an existing Android library. Okay, let's review the internal contents of an AR file. Since this project is an Android application and not Android library, I would like to search for ARs inside my dialog helper library and the name would be, of course, AAR. And here it is, dialog helper release AAR. And let's just unzip this file into dash D and then into AAR folder right here. I go to AAR and let's see what's going on here. So here we have Android manifest XML, meta inf, just like before, some r.txt class and classes char. Now, this is in stark difference to APK file. I remind you that APK file didn't have any jars inside of it. And furthermore, this Android manifest that we have here, we can just, you know, print its contents and it's a plain text. It's not a binary XML format anymore. It's just standard XML. Why is that? Well, as we said, AAR files should be incorporated into other Android projects and therefore they should contain just, you know, the starting resources. They should not contain binary compiled files because other Android projects will merge, for example, this manifest with their own manifests and produce the final compiled manifest from this merged manifest. Therefore, in order to support merging, AAR files do not convert their XMLs 
into binary XMLs, and furthermore, they do not convert their classes files into uh, DEX files. And therefore, for example, I can further unzip this classes jar right here. Let's call it classes. And then if I just, you know, find classes, all the files, we'll see that it contains just two files, build config class and dialog helper class. And in this case, this directory contains just two class files because this is a very simple library that consists of a single uh, file. And then build config is just, you know, this file that contains various build configurations. So in summary, unlike APK, a package format that contains the entire executable for Android application, and you need it to be kind of optimized for being installed on end user's devices, AAR packages contain just Android libraries, and therefore they should not be converted to binary formats, they should not be compiled. Further, they should kind of contain just source code that other Android projects can reuse when these libraries are incorporated into them. The last type of files that we're going to discuss in this video are Android app bundles, or just AAB files. AB is a package file format, unsurprisingly, <laughs> that is used to upload Android applications to Google Play and can be used to install Android applications directly. So when you generate AAB files from your Android projects, you cannot just you know, take these AAB files and install them onto your Android device or users' Android devices. You must upload these packages into Google Play. And then once you do that, Google Play generates APKs for various users' device configurations from uh, these AAB archives that you upload to, well, to Google Play, of course. And let's understand what goes into Android app bundles. Just like before, I'll search for Android AAB files here. Let's grab this one, the release AAB for my application. And of course, unzip it just like before into AAB. And once again, I've got all these conflicts. I don't care about them. I just want to see what's going on inside this file. We have bundle metadata, we have bundle config, meta inf, and base. And if we see what's going on inside this base, and let's just look for the directories right now, we'll see a lot of various directories. And we can see the following, we can see base dex, so these are the dex files, and we see lib, and these are the same uh, native libs that we saw inside the apk file. We see manifest and various resources directories, of course, and then we see some root and Kotlin stuff. And that's because, again, my application uses Kotlin. We see this meta inf, just like inside jars and APKs, but here it contains much more contents. And we see this OK HTTP 3, just like inside APKs. What's immediately evident when we look at this list of directories inside the AAB archive is that this file format is much more involved than just you know standard APK. And the reason for that is because Google Play should be able to generate various APKs from the contents of this archive. And therefore, we kind of feed all the different configurations to Google Play, and then Google Play will be able to choose whatever it needs to use in order to generate a specific configuration of our application for the end users. So all in all, at a very high level, these are the four very popular file packaging formats that are used inside Android ecosystem. To kind of bring it all together and show you schematically where these different file formats come into the play, let's discuss the overall flow of Android application build and installation. So we start with the source code, and of course, source code is not limited to just Java, Kotlin, and XML files. It includes also resources, etc. And then we also have the included jars and AARs. These are basically the external libraries that you include inside your Android application, for example, from Maven Central. And you feed these libraries and your own source code into the build process, and the build process produces, well, either of the two distributables, either APK or AAB. And of course, in this case, you understand that we are talking about Android application. We are not talking about Android uh, library, which would produce AAR file format. We are talking about Android application, so either we build APKs or we build AABs. And these two files have kind of different use cases. We can use APK, to install it directly on the device. For example, when we test our application, we can just use ADB and install the APK on our device. Or if we don't want to install the APK on the device directly, we can upload it to Google Play. And then Google Play will distribute this APK to our users. 
But if we uh, generate A, B, uh, Android application bundle, then our only option is to upload A, B to Google Play. We cannot install A, Bs directly on the devices. Therefore, <laughs> it's only usable if we upload it to Google Play. And of course, Google Play, then our users download APKs from Google Play. Google Play distributes eventually APKs. So either that's the APK that we uploaded ourselves to Google Play, or that's the APK that Google Play generated from the AB that we uploaded to it. And starting uh, from uh, 2021, Google Play requires all new applications to just use AB formats. So if you have older projects, then you can keep uploading APKs. But if you are starting a new project or started in the past two years, then most probably you already use just AB formats because that's what Google Play requires. Now, the question becomes, why do we need AABs? We used APKs for years, and as you see on this diagram, APKs are much simpler and even more versatile. We can choose whether to upload APKs to Google Play or install them on users' devices um, directly. So why do we need AB format? Why Google introduced it? Well, the reason for uh, AB format is that Google Play generates APKs from this specific archive, and in the process of generating APK, Google Play automatically optimizes those APKs for specific configurations of user devices. Let me show you what I mean with just one single example. All right, we're back in my project and let me just remind you that whenever I use this APK, then find inside the APK, APK lib, sorry, and then I want to find all the files here. So inside my APK, I had these four different implementations of my native library, something that I wrote using C or C++ code. And these different implementations correspond to different CPU architectures. And similarly, if I look inside my AAB format, I just don't remember where is that. So AB, base, and then lib. Yep, of course, the same. I will find exactly the same native libraries. And they are literally the same. So if I do div on this one, and let's say this one, these are literally the same. They do not have any differences. So what's the difference? Well. If I just, you know, grab my APK, so find uh, here name, and then I want to find APKs. So if I grab this APK and just distribute it to Google Play or to my users directly, then all the users will get all four of these native libraries. And of course, they don't need all four of them because each individual device will have its own CPU architecture. So either that will be ARM, let's say ARM64, or that will be Intel x86-64 architecture. There is no way one single device will need two of these libraries simultaneously. So basically what this means is that if I distribute this APK, then all my users will get a lot of unneeded stuff. Now, in this case, it's not really that much because let's say if we go to this x86 uh, version, it's just like five kilobytes inside. So that's not that much, but <laughs> these native libraries can be quite big. They can take megabytes. And therefore, if you distribute your APKs with all of them together, then you will consume some bandwidth of your users for nothing because they will not need all these native libraries on their devices. And of course, we could work around this problem using so-called APK splits even before AAB files came around. But what happens with AABs, so AAB file, I remind you, it also contains all these native libraries, but we don't distribute AABs. I just upload this AB to Google Play and then when my users will download APKs from Google Play, Google Play will generate APKs specifically targeting the CPU architecture of each individual user. So users who use ARM64 will of course get just one single native library, this one. And if some users use x86-64, then they will just get this one. So they will not get all these and native libraries that they don't need. And that's the reason why this AB file format was introduced to begin with. Google wanted to optimize the download size of Android applications automatically without relying on Android developers who, let's be honest, sometimes didn't take that much care of the download size of their apps. So Google said, okay, we'll do that automatically, but now instead of uploading APKs, you will need to upload AABs. And of course, there are additional complications related to signing, etc. But in general, that's the rationale. That's the reason we have AB files in addition to APK files. So that's it for this video. Now you know the differences between jars, APKs, AARs, and AB file formats in Android ecosystem. See you next time. Goodbye.